Is technology changing too quickly? And is this gonna end good? Is this a good thing? Let's talk about it. All right, if you followed my channel before, you know my channel is all about MacBooks and technology, and I love doing technical reviews. So my, I'm gonna change this video up a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit deeper, a little bit, I guess, darker. But at the end of the day, it's a video that I think has to happen, just a discussion that has to start. And I wanted to start up by saying, I love this stuff, my channel's not gonna change at all, I'm gonna keep doing it, next video is gonna be about technology, but listen to this. Is technology changing too quickly, and how is this gonna end for everyone? Is it, gonna, is, is it changing to a point where we may not have any control over it any longer? Let's talk about it. All right, I grew up in the 80s, right? Best time I thought in my life. Simpler time, technology was just starting. I had an Atari 800, I played my games, I played Joust and Frogger and all these different games. Things were expensive back then. You got that one system, you used it eight years. You had kind of a modem, you know, a baud modem and you could maybe write a little text on something. It was hard to get connected. It was just a fun time. You were very isolated. You got to spend time with your family and friends, people that are close to you. You didn't have all this stuff around you just going like this constantly, right? So it was a simpler time. Technology was not even close to what it is now. But I argue that it was a better time and I'm gonna kinda of give you some stuff in this video. It's gonna be a little bit deeper. I'm gonna give you some examples of where technology can go wrong and where it may be going wrong right now. And I wanna hear what you think. I mean, tell me what you think about this because it's important to me to get everyone's feedback on this. This is a super important topic because I love technology, but at the same time, I don't know how it's gonna end if it continues at this pace, right? So I kinda of go back to the 80s whenever I feel bad and I look down at my little Atari 800 computer and I sat in my basement and I had everything kinda of isolated. It was a comfortable time for me. It's not that comfortable anymore. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for it, but let's get into it. Let's get into some of those reasons. And you tell me in the comments. I'm just curious what everyone thinks. Am I way out there or do people think the same way I do? I mean, if it's a lot of people think the way I do, it doesn't seem like it, but I, I do think that's the case. All right, let's start with social media. And again, a lot of this has been talked about a lot, but let's just talk about it for a second. You know, it allows people to be people that they are not. It allows people to say things that they usually wouldn't say. Like I said, when I was sitting in my basement with my Atari 800, I talked to my circle around me. Now I can talk to people from Germany, from Austria, from China, from you name it, maybe not China, <laughs> Japan, you name it. And long story short, you know, you can do things, you can be somebody that you're not. But the question is, is, is this a good thing? Because as you read comments and you see social media, um, and you're not able to you know, meet people in person, shake their hands, see what they're all about. You can kind of take a stance before actually meeting somebody. Is this actually moving in the right direction? Are we becoming less, even though we have more social stuff going on with Facebook and Google and everything else, is it really becoming less connected with people and more just connected with technology? I think so. I mean, is it causing more hate in people? I think so. Let me give an example. This is a funny one, but it's, it's, it's just meant to be funny. You can put in your own, you know, whatever I'm going to say here, you can kind of put whatever topic you want in. I'm going to say, let's just say you like to lick garbage cans, and you can change that with anything you want. Before you were, you know, in the 80s when I was playing my Atari 800, my friend told me that I would say, you know, you're nuts. <laughs> I'm not going to be your friend anymore if you go around licking garbage cans, right? Nowadays on the internet, you can find a thousand people that have the same interests as you. While you're all crazy, there's just so many people in the world that can get together now that they don't think that they are, and it causes problems. Um, you know, again, I'm kind of being funny about licking garbage cans, but you guys can plug in whatever you think you know, goes in there, and there's a million examples of why this is a problem. Um, and I think everyone will agree with that, that it allows, you know, technology is allowing people that normally wouldn't get together to get together and normally wouldn't kind of, you know, get the, the response back that, oh, this is okay, but they're getting that response back. And I don't think that's okay. So let me know what you think about that, and then we'll move on here. All right, Elon Musk. So let's, he, I like him, he's a good guy. He's very smart, obviously. He does things, he's trying to help people. Let's talk about Neuralink. It's this new device. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it's basically a little chip that he wants to put in people's brains or head or whatever you want to call it. And the initial reason for it is positive, right? It's supposed to help people with epilepsy or different diseases so it can control those diseases and it allows information to go into your brain somehow. I don't know how it works, crazy stuff. But at the end of the day, it can help prevent that stuff. So it's, in general, it's a good idea, right? Now let's think about how this can be used, right? And not so good. So let's say in 10 years, they say, hey, uh, we can put these chips in people's heads that'll give them all the knowledge in the world. Your IQ is now 170. 
you know, I don't even know if that's, a, if that's the top of the IQ. I don't even know. And I would if I had that chip in my head. But anyways, so at the end of the day, now you have these people that are not going to do it and you have people that may do that. Now you have those two types of people competing in a world where it's not a level playing field, right? And that's the first thing. Some people aren't going to want to do it. Some people will. And is that really a fair playing field for humanity? Second thing is going to be, Who's the one actually putting all that information on the chip or where's the information coming from? And you may laugh at that because that person may be getting information about something that is not really necessarily true but may have kind of a motive behind it. We don't know because someone's going to have to control or program that information, right? Someone has to do that. And you may laugh. You may say, well, that'll never happen. But think about it. It's happening right now. I mean, if you go into Google, you go into Facebook, if you go anywhere on the internet right now, there's people controlling the information, right? They're the ones making decisions on who gets it, who doesn't get it, what's, it, what's the right thing, what's the wrong thing. It's happening right now, but it's just not implanted in your brain yet. So again, Neuralink might be good on the surface, but you gotta ask, start asking questions. I mean, is this technology gonna end good? Is it something good for humanity? We may have to take a step back, and, and it's gonna take people all around us, all these normal people, to kind of finally say, hey, enough's enough, but we just have to kind of figure out where that line is. All right, the military, we have drones now, and those drones can attack people, obviously, with someone sitting behind a desk. Now, again, back in the day when wars were fought, there was individual people making individual decisions based off their conscience, based off of a lot of different factors, protecting their country, things like that. Now you may have, um, you know, we may have in the future a thousand different drones controlled by one person. So now you have a thousand different things that can be controlled or attacking things that are controlled by only one mind versus all individual people. While on the surface it sounds good because it's saving the pilots and saving the people that were flying the planes, now it actually may, per, you know, may make people more, I guess, you know, it may make people more common to go out and start things and do things because they're not actually sitting in that plane. So you got to think about that as well. I mean, are drones and those type of technology good things or bad things? You know, getting great pictures for YouTube is a good thing, right? You can see the ocean from above, you can see a whale in the ocean, whatever. But when you think about it, you know, when it comes to like war and different things like that, you got to take a step back and say, wait a second, what's going on here? All right, I'm going to bring Tesla up again just because it's in the news all the time and, and I don't hate Elon Musk, trust me. Um, but at the end of the day, let's say a Tesla car. So, you know, obviously there's an auto drive feature where eventually we're going to have these cars that can drive themselves. Everyone's like, well, that's a great idea. I can sit and play my Game Boy while I'm driving down the highway, right? Well, think about this. Again, while it's, while it's learning, you know, machine learning all the information every day from everyone driving and it's getting these different scenarios, let's say a car is driving down a street and there's a little baby in a carriage over here and an older lady over here. The car is going to go and there's three people in the middle of the road. The car has to make a split, you know, split decision on who the, which way it's going to go. Is it going to hit the one person here, the three in the middle, or the older person over here? It has to do something it cannot stop. Who programs that in? That's going to be the biggest problem with these type of things. Before it was made by a conscience and by basically human nature. You had to make a split you know, second decision. You did your best you could. Now all that information will be controlled by one person or one company deciding on who basically is the lucky one that day and who isn't, right? So when you start breaking these things down, with, especially with automated cars and things like that, you got to ask yourself, you know, how is that going to end, right? Is it going to be good? We don't know. But I mean, think about those things. Those things are important. Those details are important. And you got to really think deep. So this brings me to the time we have right now. Everyone's kind of going through the same thing in the world. First time probably ever in our lifetime where we all have this, you know, I'm not going to say because I don't want to get banned, but I'll put up a picture. You know what I mean. Things are going on right now in the world. And there's a lot of governments out there saying like, we're going to, you know, let's just go ahead and make it you know, we'll make a phone app for you. We're going to track you. You can get into a restaurant by just showing your phone. Your information's on there. We aren't going to add to this later. You know, um, you got to go get this. It's mandatory. You know, uh, there's no, you have no choice in it. No choice at all. Even though, you know, I'm not even going to get into it. But the point is, is how do you think this is going to end, right? How do you think that, do you think it's going to stop? Do you think that they're going to take a step backwards and do less things after this is over or more things? Um, let's say the technology gets so good that they can tell before you're born or when you're born, the minute you're born, 
if you're going to die at 40 or die at 80 because of a disease that you may have had or may not have had. Maybe it's in your genes. Maybe that they can figure that out later. Um, are they going to say, hey, you know, the resources and the carbon and all that stuff on the earth is not worth your 40 years when someone else with 80 years can, can get 80 years? Or maybe it's better for the 40-year-old. Who knows? These are questions you have to ask yourself, right? I mean, where is technology going with this? Where is it going to end? Who's going to make the decisions? Is it going to only be a few? Right now, what's happening is if you notice in the world, the, the amount of people with a lot, a lot of money is slowly shrinking like this. And, those, and basically, those people are making a decision for many, and they're becoming less and less. So in technology-wise, that's what the, you know, technology is great at, making a lot of things for a little bit of resources. So if you only have a few people controlling a lot of different things, technology works great, right? But for humanity, does it really work that well? Those are things you have to ask yourself. And as we go through what we're going through right now, you know, there's countries that I'm shocked at that are making things mandatory for people that, you know, where you should only be responsible for you and your family and your loved ones. Everyone should make their own decision. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm totally on board with any way anyone chooses, but it should be up to you. It shouldn't be up to a few elites somewhere else, right? So even what, whether you're pro or con or whatever, it doesn't really matter. You just have to think, how is this going to end if we allow people to do this now? It ain't going to end well, I don't think. But, you know, obviously it's not ending well for a lot of people now and it's not going to end well for people later. We just don't know. But again, I just wanted to kind of throw it out there. What do you think? Put in the comments what you think. So I wanted to end the video really quickly on sitting back, just thinking of the 80s on my Atari 800, on my, what is it, 12, 12,500 baud modem, typing a line in and talking to somebody for the first time, having no distractions around me. I have no idea if there's a thunderstorm coming that's going to kill me or if the news is going crazy or if there's a virus out there somewhere. Um, you know, I just don't know. I'm basically in the dark around friends and family that I love. And I'm also in a small circle of people that I know in my community, try to make my community better. And it was a great time. I'm going to be sitting there playing my games in that little, little cave that I had in my basement. And I think as, as sad as it sounds and as, as, as isolated as we were back then, watching Three's Company and things like that, I think at the end of the day, that's why we all gravitate towards that stuff now, because it truly was a better time. And it wasn't as scary as technology is today. So... I want to end the video, didn't want to make it that dark, but I just want people to start thinking, right? If you don't think now, we have to figure out where that line is. That line has to be crossed eventually, or it is not going to be crossed eventually, and people have to stand up. We just don't know where that line is yet, or at least we're trying to figure it out. But understand that there is a line there, and if people don't do anything about it, it's just going to keep being moved down the field until it may be too late to move it back. So... To end the video, it's, it's a little dark, I understand. I love technology. I ain't going to change anything that I do. I'm going to keep making videos on technology. I just want people to think, though, there's certain things you got to, you know, you got to make a stand for. And, you know, you have to pick your battles, obviously, and pick where you want to, you know, put your efforts into. But if there was ever a time in history to do that, I think the time is, you know, upon us or it's coming up soon. So do what you need to do. Voice your opinion. Contact the right people. Tell them what you think. You know, the only people that can make a change is you, me, everyone else. So have fun in life, love technology, but just don't trust everything. That's my final comment, and I'll talk to you next time. Peace.